Hey everyone, welcome 2021, back to Sealed for Good. Glad you can join me and we've got a great year ahead. Today we're gonna to kick off the year with waterproofing fish ponds. Now, immersed areas is an area that Gripset are very well versed in and we've got lots of systems for that. I'm gonna talk about water features in another episode, but today I'm gonna to focus on fish ponds because they need to be treated completely different than other immersed areas. Now firstly, a lot of the things that go wrong with waterproofing fish ponds have more to do with the way they're constructed than the way they're waterproof. So firstly, understand how the fish pond has been built. If we've got a below ground fish pond, ask your client, did they put a damp course underneath the concrete slab? A lot of times they just think it's a fish pond on the ground and they treat it differently than a slab that's built on above ground. And so there's no damp course. And what happens? You get membranes blistering or debonding because of the rising damp. And that can be also the case for the walls. So firstly ask that, that way you can use a hydrostatic membrane on the base and ensure that you protect that part from blistering. Secondly, the walls. If it is underground and you can access the external face of those walls, ensure you waterproof it like a retaining wall or a cellar because that will prevent any dampness coming in. Now you might use a membrane in our range like the C1P, the Gripset 2P, our Gripset E60, has got very good hot negative hydrostatic resistance. However, it's never healthy to have all that dampness from the earth seeping into that concrete base or that brick face because it just stays there forever. So to construct properly, always try and ensure that you guide your client to waterproof in the external face and underneath before you even attempt to waterproof inside. Now let's talk about waterproofing inside the fish pond, where things go wrong. We mentioned blistering, We've mentioned re-emulsification, that happens a lot with liquid systems. And we also have the issue where products start to wear away because they're just not suited for the fish pond environment. How many times we've seen guys use something that's used in the shower and thinking, well, it's a nice blue color. The client wants a blue color in the fish pond and we'll go and use that membrane. And what ends up happening is firstly, the membrane isn't UV resistant. And even if it is, the problem with colours in fish ponds are they just get dirty because of the algae that grows. Now, a fish pond is not a water feature. With a water feature, you chlorinate the water. With fish ponds, you don't. So no chemicals are used to clean the fish pond except to just adjust the pH level. Because in the aquatic environment, what's inside that fish pond feed off that algae. So black or dark colours are always the way to go with fish pond membranes. Hence, if you've got a cementitious system like our C1P, our 11YDM system, those dark grey colours, you can even put a black tint in them to make them black, they work fantastic because the colour remains neutral and when the algae grows on it, it doesn't look dirty. You put a colour in there, how many times have we had clients wanting a blue or a green fish pond and within three months they want it stripped and be put another colour inside because of the algae growing on it and it looks really, really dirty. Now, if you've got a client that says to you, hey, Johnny, I want you to waterproof this fish pond and give me a blue color, guide them to it. Don't just do it knowingly that they're gonna come back and be upset with it. Explain to them, be the expert. There's a lot of good landscaping contractors out there that understand this, but work with your client and let them understand that that is the way to go. Gripset GAP has been developed to improve the standards of waterproofing. GAP offers a number of advantages, one being an all-inclusive guarantee for product and workmanship. Inquire at gap at gripset.com or call us on 1800 650 435. Now, when we talk about below ground fish ponds, when we're waterproofing them, we would rarely use our products like our elastoproof joint band if the external side hasn't been waterproofed because if you've got negative pressure coming in, you want to use a cementitious fillet, so you can use our plug or 11YDM fillet at the corners, and then we waterproof with our systems, the C1P, the 2P as I said, or our grips at E60, and waterproof over those. Don't go and use a flexible joint band at those corners, at those junctions, water wall or water floor, and find that you end up with them lifting because of water pressure coming through. That's number one. If it's an above ground fish pond, then we use the elastoproof joint band, and use, use it in the wall to wall junctions, the wall to floor junctions, and waterproof as you would with any other application with the grip set system. Now we do have specifications on fish ponds, but getting that right to start with, because the materials are not the cost. It's your labor and your time and how you finish it. It is a piece that's actually gonna be exposed. 
So even though there might be algae growing on it, people will see your works. And if it looks crappy, it's always gonna be remembered every time someone goes and feeds those fish or looks inside the fish pond. The focus of the fish pond is the fish, not your waterproofing works. Make it look good and neat. Now, how's the fish pond being finished at the top? Is it being capped with tiles? Or has it got a, a textured finish or a rendered finish? Understand that and ensure that the membrane you're using is compatible with those finishes. So if you're going with a bituminous system that's inside the fish pond, firstly, is that bitumen gonna emit any chemicals into that water? Our mantra is always, a fish pond should have a membrane that's potable water approved. There is no standard for fish ponds, but if it's safe for human drink consumption, then you know you can confidently put hand on heart to your client and tell them that you've got a fish pond that's safe, that won't emit nasty chemicals into those fish, because some of these fish that these landscape architects select are very expensive. They can be up over $100 a fish. You don't want them floating around just because of the chemicals from your membrane you've selected. So get all that right and plan it out first before you start the works. As with everything with the group set, we talk about the multiplier effect and being an educator. You're the waterproofing expert, so guide your client to the right methods. That's the builder, it could be the landscape architect or the contractors. Explain to them what you require, what you're trying to help them achieve, understand what they're looking for, and if you need, lean on us. We're here to help provide specifications. We've got our team out on site that can get there, or our tech services department can help you ensure that you get your fish ponds right. Now guys, this is the first episode for 2021. If there are specific things you'd like to hear or me to talk about this year, throw them our way. We'd love to hear your suggestions and thoughts. We've got a whole heap coming your way. Lots of exciting things, new things we're doing this year with Gripset Seal for good videos. But we're always open to hearing more about your suggestions on what you'd like. So throw us a message. Can't wait to hear from you. Don't forget, subscribe and see you next time.